to Black Pack Homestead. My name is Marella, and welcome to the Black Pack's kitchen. Um, as most of you folks that have been around for a while know, I love to lacto ferment. Love, love, love. And so I thought, vloggist, what am I doing? What can we do? Let's ferment something. So today, on the 6th of vloggist, or vloggist installment number 6, is going to be fermenting these lovely lemon cucumbers that we grew this year. I have a lot of them. And my plan is to um, slice them round like this where I've prepared some and take off, you know, a little bit of the skin since I have issues with skins of things with my Crohn's disease. So I have sliced these up and prepared them the way I want to. I don't know how it's going to work. I've never fermented these cucumbers or this type of cucumber. So, now that we have talked about what we're going to ferment first, let's talk about lacto-fermentation. Lacto-fermentation is a process of preserving foods in a salt brine. The salt is what preserves the food. And it is very important when choosing a salt to ferment with that you don't use a salt that has an anti-caking agent in it. It's hard for me to say. Um, I like to use pink Himalayan salt, but you can use kosher salt, you can use canning salt. It's just important that you use a non-iodized salt that does not have those anti-caking agents in it. So the first thing you should do is mix up your brine so that salt can be dissolving while you're preparing your whatever you're going to ferment. And the recipe that I like to use to make the brine is um, one quart of water. And if you are on a city or municipal water system like we are, you can't ferment foods in that water because it has chlorine and fluoride in it. And that is just going to mess up your ferment. So since Hattie no longer drinks formula and we got this baby water and it's just distilled water, um, that's what we're, I'm using in this jar today. And the salt ratio is two and one half tablespoons of salt to one quart of water. I will say since it's warmer in my house because we don't really like air conditioning and I use fans and rotation of closing windows and opening windows and shading the shades in the windows, it's a little warm in my house. So I added actually just probably almost three tablespoons to this just to make sure that none of that yucky bacteria is going to grow in a warmer environment. So that is the salt brine. I have mine prepared. and hopefully dissolved. Pink salt will settle and that's okay just as long as you shake it up really good before you pour it into your fermenting jar. Now the next thing is what do you put these cucumbers in? Well this is a wide mouth mason jar and my favorite thing to ferment in this is a quart wide mouth mason jar and the first thing that I like to do is put all of my herbs and seasonings that I want to um, put in for my dill. Pickles is what I'm going to make. So there you go. That just lets you know we're going to do dill. Um, and then I use these fermenting lids that are very similar to Mason Tops, but they're not Mason Tops brand. And so that's how we put it on and it burps itself. So, what herbs in the bottom of this jar? First, we're going to put our dill. And my dill, I cut it last night so it started to dehydrate and I washed it and laid it out on this paper towel. And so now I'm going to put it into um, my jar. Now, um, the reason I washed my dill is we had some aphids at the beginning and um, we did use some insecticidal soap on it. So I didn't really want to eat the soap. So this is a mixture of the dill weed, you know, the leaf part, and even some of the seeds, because I had um, a couple of them that were had gone to seed. This is also the dill flowers. And so it's like every part of the dill you can use to get that dill flavor in your pickle. Okay? 
And so that is the dill portion. And dill is, and the herbs and spices you choose to put in your jar, totally up to you. How little, how much, that is totally up to your interpretation. You know, play with it. See, you may not like my mix. Try something different. So then the next thing is one clove of garlic, and it is smashed and peeled. And I dropped that in the jar. And then we put, oh, a good amount of whole black peppercorns. I ain't saying a giant handful, but about like that. Maybe that's maybe half a tablespoon. Maybe I want a tablespoon. There we go. A tablespoon is what we're going to call that of the black peppercorns. And then every ferment, in my opinion, needs yellow mustard seed. Same thing goes with that. Uh, just take like a little, little palm full and that's, you know, dump them in. And I go, oh wait, I really like mustard. So we put more. So it's up to you, whatever you want to put in it, as far as spices, you just have at it. This is celery seed. Um, I'm not fermented with celery seed. I just recently got it. Whoa, John, that is free stuff. Do you see how that came out? So I'm only gonna, I'm gonna start with just a little, because, I mean, what if it makes weirdness? Who knows? So some celery seed. We got our mustard, and now caraway. I like a little bit of caraway in every ferment. It's very commonly used when fermenting sauerkraut, but not as much as I'd put in sauerkraut, but just to get that little flavor. Okay, and that is going to be my herbs and spices in our jar to ferment these here lemon cucumbers. Now, I've chosen to slice them round. I don't know how well it's going to work packing this jar with these, but We'll just see. It's just how I wanted to do it. And this one, I forgot to take some of the skin off. So, you know, it is what it is, folks. So then we're just going to start putting our, our little friends in our jar and just see how we can do this. I kind of don't want them stacked in like, like they were when you cut them up. I want them kind of mixed up and pretty. I don't want them to look all uniform and perfect. But you know, you want to pack them in there, leaving as few gaps as possible because you don't want a bunch of air in there trapped. Where's the more than ones that there we go. And I'll just keep packing and packing until I get most of these guys in here. Or all. I thought I'd cut too many, but maybe not. Maybe not. Alright, I think that's probably going to be about it. Because you need to uh, leave headspace. Because um, <clears throat> when you pour your salt brine over your cucumbers, it is most definitely going to make more brine. Because the salt will draw more liquid out of the cucumbers. So leave a generous headspace. I mean, that's probably inch and a half maybe on that side. But you really want everything to stay under that brine. Okay? And then the next step is shake that brine up. Now, it's going to take about a half of this brine to cover these um, cucumbers. Pour it in there. Now I'm going to stop a little short so I can take my chopstick and stick my, my um, chopstick down in here to get any air bubbles out that might be hiding down in there. See how it dropped already? There we go. And then I'll pour more brine in because obviously our level dropped. And then I will take a fermentation weight, but if you don't have one of these, those smallest um, mason jam jars like you would like make cute little jams and give for Christmas, those fit down inside nicely. But we got these as, actually I got them for Chris. <laughs> That's his birthday present, and I've probably used them more than he has. Now, I'm going to hold this over my bowl so I don't 
run my brun over and I'm just going to push that weight down in there and I'm going to let those seeds drop out. There we go. A little bit more headspace. There we go. Now just to be double sure, I'm going to go and make sure I don't have any more bubbles down in there. Alright, so there we go, and then I'm going to take a paper towel, and I'm going to wipe the rim. Now those seeds, they're going to float. There's not much you can do about that. I mean, you could fish them out if you wanted to, but there are going to be more seeds float up. It's just a fact. So then we take our lid and put it on our jar, our regular wide mouth ring. There's cucumber seeds stuck to me. And then we put our lid on like that. I mean, don't arm crank it. Just put it on. There you go. And then as the gases build up, um, it has a little star in it and it pushes it open and that's how the gases escape. So don't think that this can't run over because it has that. Because it can. Because as it bubbles up, if your brine level rises and bubbles out the little nipple here, the salt will dry and crust and clog that hole and it will run over. How'd that happen? Yeah. So I like to take it and sit it in a little dish. And this is the one I use. Two mason jars fit perfect. And then that way in case I've missed the the bubble over and the chaos of life, then there it is. I've got it. So I'm going to sit that to the side. Ah! And I'm going to put my lid on my brine because you can save this for next time at room temperature as long as you have a good lid on it. Um, let me get a drink of coffee. <clears throat> because we have one more thing to ferment. And we're going to try out my new toy got it at aldi let me tell you that one aisle in aldi it gets me in trouble every time that's where the planter came from that you saw on the front porch that's where this little guy came from he is a food chopper dosser it has all these attachments it can make um shaved carrots and all kinds of craziness and it was like four bucks so you know can't beat that with a stick so i thought we would use this to chop up our zucchini which is our next thing. I've never done this either. I have the yellow squash that you saw us pick the other day. You remember him? And this is the zucchini I actually got that the boars, vine boars, didn't. So I want to make like a little relish out of this with um, a couple of our <coughs> cherry tomatoes. And I'm going to take the leftover cucumbers, but I'm going to run them through that thing and make chunks out of them. And then put them in a jar and ferment. So, so for our herbs for this one, I am going to go with some basil. And some purple basil. And some more basil. And another purple basil. And I'm going to take this basil. And I'm going to put it down the bottom of this jar. But first, I'm going to cut some of these stems off. There we go. And washed. And there you go. Washed basil in the bottom of the jar. Now, I have been drying our dill as I've been harvesting it. And I do want this to have a little dill flavor to it. So, I'm going to take... This is... Um, flowers, seeds, stems, it's it's all the dill, the whole plant. So this one is, has a few seeds on it. And remember when you are using dried herbs, they are stronger because the flavors have been concentrated. And dill is very, very flavorful. And I don't want dill to be the only thing you taste in this. So I'm going to go sparingly on my dill. But if it were me, I'd put so much more dill in this. I love dill. So one of the tiny flower heads and a few of the dill leaves, weeds, whatever you want to call them. And then, of course, we...
we will add our peppercorns, just like before. And then our, whoops, I'm not going to put any celery seed in this because once again, never done this, going to stick to things that I know pretty much go with everything. And there's some mustard seed. And I'm going to go a little heavier on the caraway. Okay, and that's our herbs for this ferment. Now, let me move those stems. Oh, goodness, garlic. Forgot garlic. So now, as I chop the, this stuff, um, I'm going to put it back in this bowl because I want to mix it together so it's like everything together, not a layer of this and that. And I'm really good at chopping up too much stuff, you know, so um, I don't know if I'm going to have too much. So we may be uh, just eating some marinated zucchini and squash and cucumbers, you know. Okie dokie. Now, take this lid off. Hey look, perfect little cucumber cubes. This is so awesome! Alright, little cucumber cubes. I may want more cucumber. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Whoops. Now, the next thing I want to do is a little bit of onion because I think that would be excellente. And this. Where's my other knife? There it is. Ah! Scrap bowl goes to the cheek on. These are Vidalia onions, sweet onions. I'm excited to do this. You ready? Holy cow, it works! Ah, I've never, never cubed the onion that fast in my life. Oh, that's awesome! Don't you love it? Look, diced onions! Woo! Gosh, I'm having too much fun, y'all. This is awesome. Woo, boy, that onion's stronger than I expected. And then we'll put our lid back on. Zucchini. Dust zucchini. That's awesome. That is just like you could you could chop like the squash like that, bread it and fry it in those cubes. Mm. Mm. And we're gonna take our little ducky goose, whatever it is, squash. We're gonna cut him up. We're not cut him up, but you know, you know what I mean. That's gonna work. Oh, it worked. <laughs> there we go. I'm not doing a tomato. I'm not that brave. There we go. Ding dang, walla walla, bing bang. That is bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. That is cool. This is one of the best Aldi kitchen gadgets I've had in a while. That is awesome. Aldi rocks. And I'm going to take these little cherry tomatoes and I'm going to like do these with my hands and uh, just like cut quarter them more or less. I'm not going to, go ahead. Okay, so I'm more or less going to quarter these little tomatoes. I've got like four of them 
or three of them, and uh, quarter them and uh, put them in the mix as well. I think it'll be pretty. Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna do this with a knife because I'm kind of uh, kind of afraid to run these little tender tomatoes through <laughs> that chopper, you know. So there you go. This is my made up squash, fermented squash salad, for fermented squash relish, relish, relish. And so now I'm just going to mix it together in my bowl like so. So they're nice and mixed up and incorporated together. Lovely. Lovely. Oops, I'm getting it off my hand so I can show you. And there is our lovely mixture. See, that would be nice. Just marinated in some, like, um, some Italian dressing, you know, or make your own Italian dressing with some extra virgin olive oil. And that would just be a good side right there in and of itself with, you know, some, some type of dressing. So now let's fill our jar. Oh, goodness. There we go. So I'm just going to, you know, we have our jar with our spices. I went with the smaller jar since I don't know if I'm even going to like this. Whatever's left, I will put some olive oil on and we'll have it as a side tonight. I'm going to push it down in there again. As you see. Packing it in there. Packing it in there. Make sure I get those little quartered tomatoes in there. They're all going to be stuck together in the middle, it looks like. I kind of want... Oh, there is one at the bottom. Okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. It's already started to make its own liquid. So that's pretty cool. So now I'm going to shove these down in this jar again, like I did with the other cucumbers. Except this is a squash thing. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the, where the tomatoes are. Isn't that great? Great. Great. Beautiful. Beautiful. So there that is. And I'm going to, again, leave a generous headspace. And uh, here's what we have left. And I'm just going to put um, some, some um, maybe some Greek salad dressing would be good. Yeah, this this will be the marinated cucumbers and squash because I knew I'd have leftovers. I could put it in another jar and ferment it, but I don't know if I even like this fermented or I would. So there you go. There's our jar. And now we're going to shake up our brine yet again, my friend. Shake up your brine yet again. Yeah, I like to sing if you ain't figured that out. So anyway, here we are. Let the bubbles go. Pour a little more. Let the bubbles go. Now, with this one, because we're dealing with smaller chunks, you really got to put this chopstick down in there really well and get all those air bubbles out 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 we will pour more of the rest of our brown in there let it settle now I'm gonna stick my chopstick down in here again I hold this over my scrap bowl as I put my weight in Well, I wasn't hitting it then, was I? Okay, and there we go. There is our weight down in the bottom. Let me clean up my mess I just made here. Now that I've cleaned up my mess, <laughs> let's uh, let's let's put the lid on this jar. So I'm gonna wipe it again. Wipe the room with clean clothes, paper towel, whatever you have, your choice, your kitchen. And put your ferment lid on it. 
and you know make sure everything is below that brine if there's a seed or two floating you know as I said before there's not much you can do about the seeds so there's the mason top there's the ring it's not a mason top it's generic but you know what I'm saying so there you go just a little finger tight don't be a strong arm muscle man and then I'm gonna set this I'm gonna remember to put the lid back on my brine because I'm gonna save this to the next time I ferment because you know my garden's finally starting to come in so I'll be fermenting a lot more so there we go there is our whatever you want to call it zucchini yellow cricket okay guys that's it for vlogist six that is a wrap hope you enjoyed watching me ferment these crazy cucumbers i like i'm growing this year and this zucchini squash and cucumber ferment and stay tuned see how they turn out i'll check them in about three days and uh yeah it's exciting i love to ferment food so thanks for watching and i hope you learned something if you enjoyed what you saw please consider sharing our videos because that really helps us out um and gets the word out and helps us grow our channel and if you'd throw us a like that means a lot to us comment down below if you have any questions about anything you've seen in this video or any of our other videos we'd love to connect with our viewers so i'm gonna leave you with a shot of the ferments I hope you have a blessed day and take care in these troubled times. And we'll see you here next time, tomorrow, at the Vlog Pack Homestead. God bless and bye bye.